So hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I thought I'd do something a little bit different and show you behind the scenes of my YouTube filming setup. So I set this up towards the end of last year because I was really getting tired of um, filming in the kitchen, but then I'd have to kind of clear everything out of the way every time. And during the summer, that's not too bad. But uh, for the winter, I bought some studio lights because I live in Scotland and the natural light isn't great in the winter. So, so I bought some new studio lights, but they're really quite big and they take up a lot of space. Uh, and then having to kind of pack them down every time and get them out again uh, was just getting a little bit much. So, uh, so yeah, so I've set up a little permanent space. Well, I say permanent. It's in our guest bedroom, so when we have guests again, I'll have to clear it all down. But that's a lot less frequently than I actually want to use the kitchen table. So I'm going to show you my setup, uh, a few little bits of equipment that I found really, really helpful. And then I've got some new art supplies. I got some for Christmas and then I bought some just after Christmas with a little bit of uh, Christmas money that I got. These are not things that I needed. They're things that I thought that looks like a fun thing to play with. So these are not necessary. They are just things that I thought, oh yeah, that I quite like the look of that. I, I fancy having a go. Here we go. Here's my little studio setup. For filming, I've got these two uh, lights and they've, they've got like daylight bulbs inside them. And then the, the white stuff on the top diffuses the light and makes it softer. So you don't get kind of harsh shadows. Uh, they're not very expensive. Um, I think mine came from eBay. And then this is what it looks like when they're on. So I either have them pointing at me, or if I'm doing artwork, I'll have them pointing down at the table at what I'm working on. And here comes Domino. Hey, Domino. Hey. So Domino has her own blanket, which because she likes to be near me. If she's not near me, she will come and pester me. If she doesn't have somewhere comfortable to lie near me, then I'll get lots of a doggy unwanted attention. And then this here is something that I've been looking at for a long time, been trying to find a solution for. And this is a tripod, uh, fairly obviously, but it has this extending arm that goes out at 90 degrees. So I can attach my camera onto this end here and have it pointing straight down at what I'm working on. I looked at lots of different options, kind of overhead rigs and things like that, but this was nice and portable so I could take it on location as well. And uh, yeah, I think it's it's been a really good solution. I do have another tripod, which is over here. Um, this one I've had for years and years and years. It's a Manfrotto tripod. So when I came to get a new one, I also wanted a Manfrotto one because then you can use the same uh, plate to attach it so you can swap them between the two. So I quite often have the second tripod here uh, next to me so it can kind of look down and point over my shoulder and you get a different angle. And then the rest of the room is a whole load of things that have been shoved out of the way in order to make room. So you have a whole lot of random spare room bits. And then over here, we've got all of my prints that would often be at galleries and often in exhibitions, uh, but there aren't any on at the minute. So they're all bubble wrapped and uh, stored away in this corner. I'd really like to find somewhere a little bit better to store them, but that's what we've got for the minute. And then this is the view that you'd normally see uh, with me. And then there's my wallpapered wall in one corner. There's usually a mirror uh, leaning up against that wall, but I have to move it every time I film because uh, otherwise you'd see the reflections of the lights and all of the tripods and everything in the videos. And then over here is kind of what's usually behind me. And these are some, this is a Billy bootcase that I've had for many, many years. Um, and then I've moved all of my art supplies up here that aren't printmaking things. In here, I've moved everything that I'm likely to need for videos. So there's card and paper, inks, watercolors, lots and lots of brushes, some scissors, masking tape, washi tape. Uh, down here, there are all sorts of pens and pencils. And then on these shelves as well, that's all marker pens. Um, these are all empty picture frames uh, for uh, projects. 
and then down here is cutting matte. These are all like acrylic mediums. Uh, there's a whole lot more pens and pencils and some uh, random craft supplies. And up here are the things I don't use quite so often, but I still do a little bit. So uh, tissue paper, uh, pastels, charcoals, other kind of drawing mediums like that. Uh, gel plate things, so kind of textures and things to use in printing, stencils, that kind of thing. And then acrylic paints are up here. And then this is the table where I film most things. Uh, it's not actually an ideal table because it is a little bit wobbly, but it's um, it's what I had. <laughs> so it's a glass top table that I got from Ikea. And I got a glass top table because I could mix ink straight onto the table and then clear them off. So it's really useful for printmaking. And then on top of the table, I've actually got taped with masking tape uh, this vinyl backdrop. So the backdrops from my videos, sometimes they're natural wood from real tables. So my, uh, I'd actually use my kitchen tabletop, which is not dissimilar to this in kind of colour. Uh, but quite often I use these vinyl backdrops and I'll put a link in the description to where I get these from. They are uh, really good. They make it look like a really natural surface and it, they're portable as well so I can take it to any part of the house and film in it or I can take them on location as well if I'm filming on location. The other thing is I've got several different designs. All The ones I've chosen have all got kind of quite natural surfaces. Uh, so it means that I can switch them out and uh, kind of switch the look of the videos so I don't get bored too easily. So when I'm shooting videos I like to keep the what's in shot actually quite clean and so you can only see the things that are really actually necessary for the video. Uh, but out of shot I've usually got a cup of tea um, which is very easy to uh, dip your brush into instead of the water. And then I've usually got like bits of packaging and manky bits of tissue um, and then things like uh, spare batteries and the lens cap for the camera and yeah all sorts of bits kind of get shoved to the side. So today I'm going to be trying out some new materials and here's just a little sneak peek of the uh, piece I've been working on today uh, with some of my new watercolours. So I shall get on and show you the unboxing and opening and swatching of those. So I've been getting a few arty bits and pieces recently. I got these from my lovely family for Christmas. These are Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils and this is a little set of 12 of them and they're really bright colours and it comes in a like a foam lined box. It's very very swish. And then these are pro markers. I've got quite a few pro markers um, but these are watercolour ones so they're from Winsor & Newton and they're a marker pen that has two ends so it's got like a chisel tip on one side and then it's got a, like a brush pen on the other but instead of the uh, alcohol based uh, ink which you get in normal pro markers these ones have a, a water based ink in them so you can use them just like watercolours so uh, so yeah so I'm going to be swatching these and playing with them a little bit and doing some uh, some works with them and seeing how they compare to watercolours. Are there things that I can do with these that I couldn't do with regular watercolours and vice versa? So in addition I've got some things for myself from, uh, this is from my local art shop. I got some Archer's cold pressed watercolour paper. I've used their hot press pads like this before but I uh, haven't tried the cold press ones and it it's paper that comes on a block and it's sealed around all four edges so you can use plenty of water on it and it's already kind of stretched. Um, so yeah, so it's quite a nice little size this one, it's uh, 7 by 10 inches. And then I got some new paint brushes. So I got these for working with gouache and I'm going to have to just test them out and see whether they see how they work. They are um, they're watercolour brushes but they're synthetic so the watercolour brushes that I normally use are like a sable and they're really really soft and they don't kind of hold their shape very well so they don't work terribly well with 
gouache. The other brushes that I've got I use for acrylics and when you use them for acrylics they they can be really really stiff and uh, these I thought were somewhere in between um, so I got a kind of a medium size um, and a fairly large so a four and a seven kind of round brushes that come to a nice point and then this one I thought could be really useful for doing kind of square edges and it's like a little flat square brush and then this box is an order from Jackson's Art which I have not even opened yet so I'd save it for the video So I've got a few things in here and um, so some of my order I got with um, some money that I got for Christmas and some of it I used some of my credit from being on the Jackson's Art Affiliate Scheme. So some of the links that you'll see to my supplies, um, some of them go to Jackson's. So if you, if you buy anything after following the links and it's your first order with them, then you'll get um, you'll get a discount and I'll get a bit of commission too and it it does add up over time so yeah so following those links is a way to support me and to support this channel and I'm very appreciative of it so let's see what's in here little boxes we've recycled this box ah yes these I got for making a video with so they're watercolours in tubes, um, three different colours, and I got these with a specific video in mind, so you should see that in the next few weeks. So these are some more of the Luminance pencils, and I got these because um, having had the set for a few weeks and having played with it a bit, I realised that I was missing some colours. Um, and I was really missing kind of some neutral tones, um, kind of browns and greens. So that's what I've got here. So some more earthy colours. In here are more watercolours. So these are Daniel Smith watercolours which I've never tried before but they seem to do really interesting colours lots of granulation some things that like split tone um, I thought they looked really fun so I've got a couple of colours here to have a play with so I've got Luna Blue and Buff Titanium so look forward to kind of swatching those and seeing what they look like in a bit and this is the last thing yeah, it's more watercolour, um, but slightly different. So this is the Gansai Tambi Starry Colours set. And they're like Japanese watercolours and these are all like really shiny and gold. I looked at a few different brands when I was trying to decide which ones to get and the reviews for these ones seem to be pretty good. Um, they... I believe should work just like normal watercolours but then the uh, the water if you, if you leave it on there for a while it becomes kind of thicker and creamier and so you get kind of get a little bit more opaque colours so they're kind of somewhere in between a watercolour and a gouache. Look forward to those, anybody who knows me knows I love a little bit of gold, a little bit of sparkle so I'm going to look forward to adding these into some um, art projects. I'm going to have a play with these, I'm going to do some swatching and and then let you know my thoughts so for these marker pens you seem to be able to draw a really nice controlled uh, fine lines that don't bleed at all uh, just by using them as a marker um, which could be great if you wanting something that um, actually works as a kind of standard marker pen 
The brush tip is fairly kind of inflexible. It is more like a, a felt tip than an actual brush. Um, but it's a nice pointed shape that should give you some nice, really nice fine control at the pointy end. And then you can add water into it to blend out. So yeah, some of the colours seem to uh, blend maybe a little bit better with the water in that they don't give you a kind of a solid line, but then you can always like work back into the colours to, um, to smooth them all out. So yeah, this colour seemed to blend quite smoothly into the water and there's a nice kind of easy transition there. And then other ones you get more of a harsh line across it. And then you can play around with blends by mixing colours together. So let's put these two colours together. And then get a damp brush, but I'll dry it off a little bit because I don't want to add too much water into here and I can blend them by working that back and forth. So it seems like you can go from one area of colour to another fairly easily. So do some green and some yellow and some brown. And then let's try and blend those together. That's quite nice. I'm going to clean my brush there. And then the other thing that you can do is apply two different colours in the same area and blend them together like that. So you can get some nice mid-tones as well just by using the two pens together. So that's quite, that's quite nice and it really extends the range and the usefulness of these pens. So yeah, so you do get the nice blooms and, and the interesting effects that you get with watercolour with these pens. Um, so I think they're going to be quite fun to work with. So I'm going to swatch my nice pencils as well. I think the only thing with these is that these come in such a lovely box, but then I've bought extras of them. So what do I do with them? Are they going to sit in there? Will that work? No, that won't go. that's not going to close. No. I'm going to have to find something to store these in um, where I can keep them all together. It's either that or I decant these from their lovely box and put them all in a pencil case. So yes, I've got to decide what to do, whether I decant them all or whether I find extra storage for the extra pencils. What I've found with these from using them so far is that you can get some really intense colours but if you're doing a big drawing or if you're doing a lot of that it really hurts your hand. So oh yeah, I didn't say why I chose these pencils. Um, it's been a long time since I've used coloured pencils but actually they were the first drawing medium that I really got into when I was, when I was younger. I had a set of Derwent pencils and I absolutely loved them and I kept them for years, all in the right order. So I'd look at the numbers and make sure the numbers were all in the right order so that the colours all matched up in this perfect rainbow. Um, and uh, yeah, and I really liked drawing with them as well, but I've no idea where they are now. It's been a long time since I've used them. Yeah, I've really enjoyed seeing other artists work with uh, a mix of watercolour and gouache and, and coloured pencil and the addition of that texture onto the kind of the wet media is something that I was, I was really kind of looking for. Um, I was thinking that I'd, it was something I'd like really like to try. So 
Um, so yeah, so I, I looked into what pencils uh, were available and uh, these ones are light fast. So the LF gives you the light fastness number so that you can use them to create like original works of art that you're going to sell and uh, people can put them on their walls and they're not going to fade. Uh, I don't know whether that's something I'm going to be doing, but I like to have the option of that. And also when I'd seen some reviews and I'd seen people using them, then the, the colours looked really intense and vibrant and I thought that's what I wanted. So I've gone for these. They are very expensive. They come to about £3 a pencil. So you can see it really adds up if you want to get a good kind of collection. Oh, that's nice. So this is one of my new ones and it's a yellow ochre, which is a colour I use an awful lot in watercolour. Yeah, that's nice. And then this was the yellow that came with the set and you can see it's a really kind of vibrant lemon yellow. In fact, it is called lemon yellow. But yeah, it's almost like lime green. So I kind of felt like I needed something in between these two to kind of soften it a bit. Oh yes, that's a good colour. Glad I went for that one too. This one is called Olive Yellow. And then the last colour is white, which you can't really see on here. But I'm going to do it anyway. So yeah, so I think that's a, a nice broad range of colours now. It's a lot more balanced having these kind of browns and greens and things in there. I think this could get a little addictive buying new pencils. I'm already thinking some kind of taupey beigey colours would be really nice and would kind of complement that a lot. Yeah, let's use what we've got to start with now and uh, see what I can do with these. For these I'm applying some water to the surface but then I'm going to let it sit there for a short while kind of activate the paint. And I'm going to swatch these on white, but I'm also going to swatch them on black because I think that could look really interesting. Oh, I can see the paint starting to move around now. Zoom you in so you can see too. So that's look, looking really nice and creamy now. Um, I'm wondering if it'll get even more so if I leave it longer. It's quite... Um, it's quite addictive just moving it around on the palette. It's really nice. So that's the yellow gold. And I thought it might be a little bit too yellow, but actually on the paper I think it's Maybe I like it better than the other ones. Oh, that's good, right. That one's very subtle. I could see it as like a wash over the top of something else. That could, that could be quite nice. It's got just a little bit of sparkle in it. And this is the white gold, which I'm not expecting to do very much on white paper. Can I actually see it? Same swatches on black now. Ooh, nice. Yes, that shows up nicely. So I want to be really careful what I, you know, what I use these for. Uh, not because I don't want to use them because I've got them and I want to make the most of them But I really want on this channel to be able to create art that anyone can reproduce no matter what kind of supplies that you've got So I don't want to be using like really specific things that um, You know require you lots of money to get hold of So if I use them uh, For major projects in this channel, it's probably going to be a really limited way because I, you know, 
if I do a watercolour tutorial, I want them to be available to you whatever kind of watercolours you've got, not necessarily having sparkly gold ones. Although they are very pretty. So yeah, they really stand out on the black. And here are the Daniel Smith watercolours that I got. So I'm going to have to remind myself what these are. So this one is Luna Blue. And it's like a very, it's kind of darkish indigo colour and I do use indigo a lot. But this one had lots of granulation in it and it's, it's kind of greyish colour. And then this one is Titanium Buff, or Buff Titanium. Yes, Buff Titanium, which I think is a little bit more opaque. And it's a really kind of neutral tone, which I think could be very, very useful. Um, it's definitely within my colour palette. So yeah, so we're getting some lovely effects with this, uh, this one here. So I'm going to add these pans into my set of watercolours and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to having a, having, a, having a go with them doing some actual projects. So I've had uh, these for a little while and I've had a chance to do a tiny bit of playing with them. So I thought I'd show you what I've done so far and what I think of them. Um, so this is a piece that I did with the uh, Pro Markers here. So I did the outline in a fine liner and then I coloured each of the stripes in halfway with the Pro Marker and then I used water to blend it out. So what I was trying to do was trying to like learn how to get a really nice smooth blend. Um, and I think the Pro Markers work really well for kind of colouring in these smaller areas. Um, and I, there are a few little messy bits here, like that, but that's kind of when I went in with maybe a little too much water. Um, so yeah, getting the, the balance of the water right uh, was, uh, was yeah, a little bit of a, a challenge on that. Um, what I did was I started mixing some colours, so, uh, so some of these are kind of blends of different colours and they're uh, really nice. And then this was done with the Pro Markers as well these um, just like a single swipe with a pro marker and then used water to uh, kind of pull out the leaves from the stems uh, with, the, uh, with, the, with a brush. And then when it was still wet I went in and used the marker on the top to try and add some little dots and things and I found that where, the, where it was really wet where there was a lot of water on the surface uh, the water would kind of get sucked back up into the pen and it wouldn't uh, release any of the pigment out onto the page. And then you'd have to kind of scribble with the pen a little bit to uh, kind of get the ink flowing again. Uh, but where it was kind of like nearly dry, you got some kind of lovely soft blends like this and that worked really well. So it's just again a case of the kind of knowing the water control and knowing kind of how far you can push them. So. From there, I went on and did this. The cup shapes here were done with the Pro Markers. I just kind of did an outline and then used water to blend them in the centre and the same with the yellow ones. And then the stems were done with the Pro Marker, not using any water, not blending them at all. And you can see they're really kind of solid and opaque, but you can't see the bleed, th you can't see any bleed through to the other side, which is a really nice benefit of these markers. And then over the top, I've used the uh, the pencils, these ones here, just to add a little bit of detail and a little bit of texture. And then these orange leaves in here are all done with those pencils as well. Um, I do really like them. You've got to kind of layer them quite a lot and press down quite a bit to uh, to get them, uh, yeah, the the pigment to be really saturated, which is maybe maybe a little bit more than I was expecting to have to do found that uh, some of them I tried to go over the top of the watercolour while it was still a little bit damp and um, absolutely nothing happened at all. So you had to wait till it was really completely dry, um, which kind of makes sense. I'm just impatient. But yeah, really happy with the way this is looking and I'm looking forward to playing with both of these some more.
And then with the pencils uh, from the set, I really wanted to know like what they would look like if you layered them over the top of one another. So the, the pigments are all really bright on their own, uh, but when you uh, mix them and you layer one layer on top of another, you can get some much more subtle tones and colours, and that's the kind of thing I'd like to be able to do. So I've created this colour chart with all of the colours on the sides, along the top, and then I just use one colour all the way along and then all the way down. So the ones down the middle here are where there's two layers of the same colour overlapping one another. And then all of the ones kind of above and below that line are where the two colours cross. And you can see, like you can get some really nice kind of olivey greens by mixing spring green and black and kind of like nice purpley shades by mixing the blues and the, the reddy browns. So yeah, so these are the kind of things that I'm going to use as a reference and play with a little bit more. But yeah, I think this is very satisfying in its own right. And then with the new watercolours that I got, I have done this piece here. And this is going to be a separate video, it's going to go up on Wednesday. So if you want to see that, then uh, you might want to subscribe to the channel. And if you really want to see that, then uh, you can press the little bell button and it will give you a notification when I upload new videos. So this is a variation on the pattern grid uh, that I've done a few times, but that I've, I do have a video on it um, on my channel. And it's just using a couple of colours of watercolour and then some pen over the top. And on this one, I've added some of that gold from the set. Just for a little bit of something extra. And I don't know if you can see the way it just captures the light a little bit. But yeah, it's really nice. And then I think some of the colours on here are really beautiful. So the way this blue fades out and the way it mixes and the way that you can kind of see the, the granulation and the kind of the patterns that form in it, I think are absolutely stunning. So yeah, really happy with that. So I want to say thank you so much for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you did, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this, then please do subscribe. And if you want to see the video, the process of me painting this watercolour grid, then that video is going to be up on Wednesday. So I look forward to seeing you in another video again very soon. Thanks. Bye.